Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Pikmin 3! In the last episode, we began our lovely adventure by crashing onto PNF 404. And in this episode, we will be going to the Garden of Hope to find Brittany. Um, before we do that, though, let's press Y and check the talk option and see what Alf has to say. Brittany? Brittany, mm -hmm. I'm coming to help you now. Okay, that's it. Alright, that wasn't much. That was very anticlimactic, Elf. Thanks for that. Alright, uh, so I guess there's not really much else to do. You can also check the copad from the ship, check your data files, and if you're over an area that you've already explored, you can check the map, and if you have any areas you have already been to, it'll show you where the fruits are. But besides that, there's not really much to say, so we're like going to go ahead and go to the Garden of Hope. So, if you hear like small sounds in the background, that's just my guinea pig being a nuisance. I can't really stop her from being said nuisance. So, if you hear noises, that's what it is. Alright. Second day. Brittany should be around here. Something is flashing on my map. Maybe it's her. I'm running out of sustenance, so I hope I find her before it's too late. Alright, first things first, you got your little timer. That is the 13 minute timer that I mentioned in the last episode. It looks like the onion has followed me here, so where are the Pikmin? Alright, so you walk under the onion and you can call out any Pikmin you have. We only have our 21 reds, so we're going to call them out. Oh, that's right. The data file I found explained all this. The onion is the Pikmin's nest. Alright, yeah, it tells you how to take out and return Pikmin there. I'm going to install an application on the copad that lets me check the Pikmin status remotely. Alright, so this is going to be a very helpful app. So we can see what the Pikmin are doing. Alright, Pikmin info. Uh, while we're on the subject of the copad, this is a new feature that was not in the game's original release that they added. It's basically like the Piclopedia in Pikmin 2, which I thought was a really nice change. Okay, but I'm not going to go through the, that right now. I'm probably going to go through it way later because there's a bunch of enemies we haven't found yet in there and I don't want to spoil it too much. Alright. I'm not gonna butterfly down. We can't do anything about this wall right now. Aim for its back. So, okay, so what it was saying there, if you aim directly on an old bulwark back, bulwark back, you'll kill it directly and I didn't do it right there. And he almost ate one of my Pikmin. <laughs> Good job. Good job, dude. Alright. Um... Get these pellets, get these bridge pieces. I put a few on that gate over there, so they're working on that. Okay. I'm gonna put that in this. I'm gonna get the last couple pieces. Alright, there we go. Another data file, pressing, oh yeah, it's telling you how to charge Pikmin there with the X. You basically lock on and then charge yeah that'll be an important feature especially in some of the boss fights very helpful you don't actually have to throw or guide your pikmin like in the previous games okay they're almost done with that gate so we're gonna help them out get that knocked down all right that's knocked down Get one pigment on this, and the rest are gonna do this. A data file is telling about transporting fragments, which is something I addressed in the last episode as well. All right, Pikmin stages. Um, they have their leaf. You saw how our Pikmin are leaves right now. They ha also have a bud and flower stage, and basically, up in their stage, basically just increases their um speed. A flower bloomed on the Pikmin's head. It's amazing how many plant-like qualities they possess. I wonder if they develop any new skills with that flower. I'll have to keep a close eye on them. Alright. So, unlike, um, this is Nectar. 
So unlike previous games where one Pikmin could drink a whole drop, which was really annoying, they changed it so only a certain amount of Pikmin can drink a drop, which makes it a little bit better and a little less wasteful for nectar. Like, there are upsides and downsides to having, like, a set number of Pikmin that can get flowered over a nectar drop, but all in all, the I think the advantages outweigh the disadvantages when it comes to that change. Shh, it's asleep. I think we can sneak up on it, and it's telling us how to fight big bull barbs there. We're gonna go around through the bushes. And you can hide in the bushes to retreat, and because bull barbs are dumb, and they can't see you when you hide. Um, but yeah, the way you want to take out this Bulbarb is get behind it, and then charge your Pikmin onto its bum, much like you did in the first game. Like, in Pikmin 2, uh, the best way to fight Bulbarbs was, like, throwing them. Um, there's still an advantage to doing that, because if you throw a Pikmin right on a Bulbarb's eyes, it will not quite stun them, but it will prevent them from attacking. Because, I mean, wouldn't you flinch if someone was hitting you in the eye, too? <laughs> so, that's an advantage. But if they're sleeping, the best way to take care of them is bum rushing. Alright, so, Bulbarb's gonna give us a boost in Pikmin. Big boost in Pikmin, give us a lot more. Basically, your best... Um, strategy for getting as many things done as you can is leaving Pikmin like I just did to do tasks while you go off and do something else. Multitasking is a big part of the Pikmin games. Um, Alright, so there's Brittany. Oh no! Brittany's just lying there. I hope I'm not too late. Pick up Brittany. Pick up. Please still be alive. And I'm laughing because she was just asleep. <laughs> Alf? Sorry about that. I was just taking a little nap. So you're close by. Why wasn't I moving, you ask? Oh, you know me. I'm a pretty sound sleeper, even with all these creatures creeping around. She's like me. <laughs> I relate. But never mind that. Listen, I discovered what looks like a piece of fruit. It's over there. But I'm kind of stuck here for the time being. Could you go and check it out for me? Yes. We will go check out this piece of fruit, which is a strawberry right over here. Wow, it's even bigger than I thought it would be. If this giant thing really is fruit, then we've hit the jackpot. I'd like to analyze it at the Drake, but how do I get it there? Well, to answer that question, Alf, the power of slavery. Alright, we're gonna throw pit three Pikmin on that and they will carry that back to the ship automatically. While we go into this cave. Alright, and it's giving you tips on each color, each Pikmin color is good for different things. Reds are best at fighting because their attack power is a little bit boosted over the other color types. But the other color types also have their advantages beyond that. So. It's good to know your Pikmin types and what they can do. Alright, so this is a Medusal Slurker, so we're gonna kill this real quick. This is basically what I believe the jelly floats from Pikmin 2 evolved into. Alright, and these are Rock Pikmin. Are these creatures Pikmin 2? They're giving me a funny look. It's basically just rocks with googly eyes. That's all the rock Pikmin are, and I love it. Alright, do they want to break it? Yes, we're gonna whistle and throw them against the crystal. They sure pack a punch, yes. Rock Pikmin will continue to try to bang their heads on rocks after you throw them, but if you whistle them back it, and throw them again, it does more damage than, than them just running into the rock and banging on, banging on it with their face. So, keep that in mind. Their onion was trapped inside that crystal. Since I have two types of Pikmin now, I can select the ones I want to use with Elf. Alright, it's telling you how to swap through Pikmin types in your group. And press Y. Alright, so basically, if 
pressing Y when you have two, more than one type of pigment, it will basically dismiss whatever group you don't have selected at the bottom. So like I had my rock selected so it dismissed the reds. That's how that works. That's another change from the- I'm getting interrupted by the ship, that's probably the strawberry. Oh, the drake is sending us a message. Yes, we got our little strawberry here. Analyzing recovery and we can little rotate. Look at the fruit. Sunseed berry. And that will give us one whole canister of juice. So finding at least one strawberry has already added one day to us, to our adventure. Large quantities of Pictomen U detected. This is a seed bearing fruit, making cultivation on Kopai possible. Juice from this fruit is safe for consumption by crew members. I can't talk today, I swear. <laughs> I'll add a fruit file to the Kopai, where we can store the results of our analysis. Alright, and that will, is what the last circle is. And you can check any of the fruits you've gathered. But since I don't know much about plants, I'll ask Brittany to write the report. She is the botanist, after all. Alright, I'm gonna get the rocks to carry this back so we can get some more. Yesterday's foe is today's food. Wow, nature is unforgiving. <laughs> Alright, rock pigment are very hard, like rocks. Alright. Now, I could sit here and let these grow into flowers a little bit more, but I would actually like to have them in my group because the more rock pigment you have, the more you can throw, and the less you have to sit there and call them back to smack their heads on the crystal. <laughs> Alright, uh, that's just the data file. I did not mean to whistle the reds. Alright, new sprouts will be the same color as the pigment that retrieved the pellet of creature. So, basically what it was showing there is the majority of the color of pigment that is carrying whatever it is back, it will go to that color. It's like, if, like it showed in the thing, if there's two rocks and one red carrying a, bulbor, a little bulbor back, it will go to the rocks. If there's one, two reds and one rock, it'll go to the reds. Alright, so we're gonna get these pellets back and then we're gonna go back outside because that will be it for getting the rocks until we get over there where Brittany is. Do I have them all? Alright, all right, we're good, we're good. We got 70, 67 Pikmin. Uh, 64 in a group because the three that carried the strawberry back. Alright, now that we have rock Pikmin though, we can deal with these glass gates. Reds can't do much against these, but if you throw rocks at it, they will eventually crack it, yeah. Reds will just bang their head on against it to no avail. It doesn't really do much. Um, and also if you throw rocks at these nectar thingies, they will automatically break it. What are you two doing? Oh my god. Right, let's get as many of you flowered as we can. Alright. Alright, uh, break this. Get some more rocks flowered. Alright, now let's go free Brittany. I need my rocks, not that I didn't mean to charge them. Gosh darn it. Uh, uh, I, I accidentally charged it. How did I accidentally charge it again? But oh well, it worked. We got her. Whew. I can't tell you how happy I am to get out of this place. I'm sick of sleeping outside, and I'm super hungry. Um, what's with your entourage there? What's that you say? They're called Pikmin? They're cute. But we don't have time for cuteness right now. Look over there, Alfie. That's so cute. She calls him Alfie. I think that's adorable. <laughs> Let's work together together and nab that huge piece of fruit. It is a lemon. All right. So now that we have Brittany, we can throw her up there. Let's give her some red Pikmin. I'll take it from here. Press Y and select me if you'd be so kind. All right. It's telling you how to switch between captains and you can switch between them. Another nice thing they added is when you switch to a captain, automatically the Pikmin around you automatically come into your group so you don't have to sit there and whistle, waste time and whistle them. 
All right, Copad's radar align is telling you about the go here function, which another feature that I was really happy they added when a Pikmin 3 originally came out. You don't have to auto you don't have to manually walk captains places. You can just select them and tell them to go here on the map. How strange to find such a data file. Come to think of it, the radar did have a go here feature. We should try it out soon. It seems like it'd be helpful. We decided to split into multiple squads, which I will show in just a moment. Um, I'm actually going to throw Alf off so I can tell him to... I actually want him to go back to the rock on Yun because we are going to be sending... Once we kill these enemies up here, we are going to be sending them back there so we can get a little, a few more rock hits in because I don't have quite enough. I need a few more. Alright, so kill those. Um, before we tell them to carry those back, though, I want to smash this. Alright, we got that. Alright, so we're going to tell the rock pigmen to carry these guys back. gonna get a few on this pile and then some more on this pile uh, let's smash this egg see what's in it eggs can not only contain nectar they can also contain uh, I won't say potions because there's only unlike Pikmin 2 there's only one potion type in this game they took which I can kind of understand, they took the purple potion out because it was kind of overpowered, but the um, super spicy potion is still in the game, we just have to get to the point where we can get it, we're not quite there yet. Which we will, I'll talk about it more when we actually get to that point. Break the crystal, yeah. Um, those enemies that we killed and sent back to the rock onion, they can throw those crystals they had on them and squish Pikmin. Uh, the nice, another nice thing about rock Pikmin, they cannot get squished. So even if a rock Pikmin got squished by one of those crystals, it wouldn't die. Unlike the other colors, you can actually get squished. Alright, um, where's that strawberry? We need to get this back. And the reason I sent Alf back to the Rock Onion is because I don't want to have to go out there later and have the day end and just have to go out there and pick Pikmin later. Uh, so, uh, with the few rocks we have, we're going to break this. Uh, actually, I think I'm going to they can continue banging their heads on that while I check on Alf. Uh, did they put any? Okay, I didn't put any. Am I still waiting on those? Yeah, I am. Okay. Um, as soon as Alf gets those, I'm going to bring him back over here so he can help Brittany. We've got another strawberry, and then we've got a lemon. Uh, while Alf's waiting on those guys, I'm going to... Now what could this be? The radar's picking something up. Alright, the radar is detecting a signal of some sort. Maybe it's a new type of food. I really am concerned if your the food from your planet gives off electrical signals, Brittany. I really am concerned. Let's go and look right away. Okay, we will do that. Uh, red pigment are resistance to fire. Yes, so we're going to throw our red pigment at these guys. Uh, I need that blowhog to not be facing the water. I want to... I wanted to kill them while I... Okay, yeah. These blowhogs, you can send Pikmin to fight them automatically. Just make sure they're, the blowhogs are not facing the water. Because if they throw the Pikmin in the water, they will die. And that's not fun for anybody. Alright, we're going to get a few Pikmin on that. So I can carry that back. Grab this data file. Um, I need Alpha over here to do this part. So I really need to get him back over here. On the opposite shore, there are materials for building a bridge. I bet if Alpha and I work together, we can get it done in no time. To ask Alpha to join the squad, move the cursor. Yeah, it's just you just whistle him to get him back in the squad. Okay, he's telling you how to target right there. Um, all right, we're gonna. I need to switch to Alpha. 
He's got his picky mins. I don't think there's anything coming back to the rock onion. We can't get past these electric gates right now, so we're going to tell him to come over here and meet him back there so we can do some more. We're starting to run out of time, but I think we're still okay for now. So let's just wait for him to get back. Hopefully we can get up to a hundred Pikmin, because that is the uh, one short. Good, good word. All right. Hopefully we'll be able to get up to hundred Pikmin because that is the max amount you can have at the field in a t uh, out in the field at a time. God, I can't talk. <laughs> so I'm one short of having a full squad. And there he is. Okay. All right. Now that we have our rocks with us, first things first, let's run into this nectar. So we can get some more flowers. Alright, like I said earlier, rocks are impervious to crush damage. And this file basically explains it. So if you use rocks to fight these volleywogs, they go down in no time. They are no longer the serial killers they were in Pikmin 1 and 2. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. Um, but if you don't have rocks with you, you can also fight, uh, Wally Wallace with other Pikmin. Another cool thing, if you weigh it down with the other colors, it also will not be able to jump. Yeah. It, it's basically, <laughs> these data files, I basically address what, ha what, just a... It's like there. No, I don't want, I don't want the rocks to have that, because I don't want to go all the way back over there. Um, the reds can have these because I don't want them to try to walk all the way back over there when it's getting late. I want to get that spectral lid. Alright, there we go. Get you carry that back. And there's also some skater leaves over here that I want to grab as well. <laughs> it's frozen right in mid here. The onion stops spitting out seeds. But the Pikmin inside the onions still be, seem to be increasing in numbers. And apparently, once the surface population reaches 100, new Pikmin are born inside the onion. This means that a maximum of 100 Pikmin can be active outside the onion at one time. Alright, yeah, like I was saying, you can continue getting more Pikmin after you have 100. They will, you will just not have to pluck them, and they will be born inside the onion, and you can take them out whenever you want. Um... We won't be able to do this, what's behind this gate, until later, but I do want to go ahead and knock it down so it will be out of the way. Alright, we got that. I'm going to go ahead and go through so I can just use the go here feature later to come back here. Um, the reason we can't do anything here right now is because there's an electric gate right there and we don't have the Pikmin we need to get past that. Um, unlike Pikmin 2, electricity is not an insta-death, it just stuns any Pikmin who are not immune to it. Which is kind of nice because, <sighs> in all my years of playing Pikmin 2, probably the most deaths, like unintentional death of, Pik death of my Pikmin that I had the most of was probably electrical deaths because Pikmin are stupid and would run right into electricity. Like, the dummies they are. Alright, it's probably the worst non-boss Pikmin casualties I had in Pikmin 2. Alright, so we're going to throw some Pikmin over there to Alf. I'm going to throw some reds, and I'm going to throw them some rocks. And that should be enough for now, because we just need rocks to break this. Alright, and they can, can get them on that. And we can put the reds on this one. And I'm gonna get Brittany to throw some more. Brittany can't get over there until that bridge is finished. And probably by the time. I probably should have. There was no point in throwing them there, honestly, because they're about to finish the bridge. <laughs> and if you haven't guessed already, that's signal they were sensing before is the first boss fight. I don't think we're gonna get to the boss fight to- I don't know if we're gonna get to the boss fight today actually, but we will get as far as we can. 
honestly, um, when I first played this, when it first came out, um, not now, I was a little bit rusty from not playing for so long. And it actually took me two days to get this far because I ran out of time right when I was trying to build the bridge when I did it the first time on the Switch. Alright, so we're not all of our Pikmin are flowered, so there's really no use for that right now. Yeah, the, st the sun is starting to set. The signal seems like it's coming from over there. Alright, we're gonna go ahead and break this down. Like I said, I don't think we're gonna get to the make much leeway in it, but we can. We're running out of time. Because there's really not much else we can do. We can't go over there without going in the water because we try that. that. And everything else is blocked by electric gates. And that area is also blocked by a gate. So, this is literally the only thing we can do right now. What? What's this data file doing all the way out here? And the, the kind of neat thing about this, whatever captain you're controlling when these, um cutscenes happen will be the one that's talking like I was controlling Brittany so she's the one that's talking here. There's several cutscenes like this and if I was controlling Alf he would be the one speaking instead. So we'll get to see a few of those. My search journal entry number three. My search for treasure continues with no luck but I can't fly back home to Hakutake without procuring a few priceless artifacts. I'm sensing something valuable up ahead but I'm also sensing danger. So if someone finds this data file please send word to my son that I didn't make it. Captain Olimar. Captain Olimar? There's another captain who's been through here? And he's from Hakate. People from their planet go to such extremes to scavenge treasure. Maybe it's all the vegetables they eat that makes them so treasure crazed. Well, sad to say, it looks like this Olimar fellow... <laughs> why, did I, why did I add the word fellow there? Met his end up ahead. We better be careful. Alright. Like I said, it looks like some kind of nest. It's like a hollowed out tree trunk. And it will be sundown before too long. Alf, didn't you mention that nocturnal predators were attacking these stray Pikmin? Alright, so, yes. In the previous games, you could also, if you were, if Pikmin were in radius of the ship or the onion, they would be alright. And in this game, they actually added a circle, which is kind of nice, because I can't tell you how many Pikmin I've lost, because I thought they were in range, but they actually weren't, and they got left behind, and I was so mad. Looks like the Pikmin in the area of the nest thing we call an onion can get back on their own, though. Alright, so yeah, they actually added a circle so you can see if they're in the area or not. Better call back the Pikmin who are to my squad before it's too late. But it could be tiring to walk around everywhere to collect all the Pikmin. Still, I'll make sure that when you press A near the SS Drake, a whistle will sound that will call all Pikmin. I did not know that. I did not... I must have not read that. I think I skipped most of the cutscenes when I played through it the first time because I'd seen them so many times. So I didn't see that text the first time. I might have to go back and try that. Um... It's gonna activate a cutscene as soon as we go in there, so I think actually we're gonna start heading back to the Onion. I don't really want to try to go in there right now. Because it'll initiate the boss fight. And it... I could start the boss fight, but I don't want to start it and then accidentally leave the Pikmin behind because it got knocked out of the group by the boss. So let's not just not do that all right um so i want to see what this new whistle feature so i'm going to throw one red pikmin out there so what was it say going up to the drake if you press a here closer to the onion ah okay so he he just ran over here okay Oh, that's, oh, that's neat. I didn't know you could do that. Because I must have skipped the cutscene and not been able to see that text. Alright, uh, we got all the Pikmin, so they're fine. So, and I can't put the rocks up because the rock onion is way over there, but that's okay. Um, 
we're just going to leave the Pikmin right here. And I'm going to take Brittany. Is there anywhere? Um, we're going to go a little, for a little exploring for the sunsets. Like I said, you can't take Pikmin in the water because they'll drown. Alpha and Brittany are fine because they're wearing spacesuits. But if you go down here, underwater creatures, you can also punch this guy. So that's what I'm going to do while we're waiting for the sun to set. We can't do anything about that gate without Pikmin, nor the, um, the, uh, fragments. There actually is an achievement for killing an enemy with your bare hands. I think when I played through it the first time, I did it by killing a skid relief with Brittany. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, I'm just gonna entertain myself by punching this guy. I probably won't kill him in three seconds, but... Alright, so that is the end of day two. And all our reds are gonna go back in the onion. So now we've got our two onions, and they are going to. They're going to. Combine into one! Okay, so this was another complaint that they addressed in Pikmin 3. They addressed a lot of um, complaints Pikmin people had about the first two Pikmin games. Um, people complained about why there were too many onions and you have to go to each one to um, get the Pikmin you wanted. And it was a lot of tedious clicking and scrolling. So they addressed that and all every time you get a new color of Pikmin, you, it fuses into one onion after the day ends. So different colored onions can fuse into a single onion. So now we only have one onion for the rocks and reds. Alright, so we got a lemon and a strawberry. We're gonna I'm gonna speed it up here a little bit. Strawberry lemonade, that's probably really good. Alright, I'm rushing out the juice. No extra gulps for anyone. That's another thing I don't understand. Like, even when you don't have all three captains, it just you just Alf still Alf and Brittany still drink a whole freaking canister of juice. You think it couldn't ration it out better? <laughs> No, we gotta respect game mechanics. Alright, so I thought this episode would be shorter, but it turns out it wasn't because of all the cutscenes and tutorials. Oh, we haven't lost any Pikmin yet, so that's good at least. These videos will probably get shorter as the days go on because there will be less tutorials to deal with. There's a source of that mysterious signal. We found a note left by someone named Captain Olimar. It appears that this Olimar is from Hakate. Perhaps he's transmitting the signal? Or maybe it's our captain. Tomorrow we'll have to go find out what's going on. Alf. Alright. Exploration day three. Alright, so I think right before we end this episode, I do want to do something. I do want to go into the copad and um, address the fruit we've gotten. Sunseed berry. As a scientist and as a food eater, I'm excited about this new source of potential nutrition. I just wish it didn't look like it was covered in pimples. Luckily, the taste of it is like delicious and scrumptious. <laughs> Had a baby. Let's gather as many of these as we can. Alright, and then we got our lemon. Face wrinkler. This fruit is so sour that one bite makes my whole face want to climb out into my mouth and pull it back out. It's high in pictum in you, though, so maybe I'll try adding small amounts of the juice to other food. Better food. Alright, um, and uh, like I said, 
as the enemy files will have a little bit of spoilers to enemies we haven't like seen or addressed yet. I will be going over those probably a little bit later because I don't want to spoil anything too badly. Once we've seen most of the enemies, I'll probably address it. But I think that is it for this episode. In the next episode, we'll be going back to the Garden of Hope and doing the boss fight. See you guys then!